a guy he met in Helen's apartment, her roommate's boyfriend, who went down the rotten wood stairs to his Thunderbird under the orange light arched over the street to find black and whites in a shoebox he had taken on the streets of New York City, who wore an undershirt, a shirt, and a thin sweater Will could not see beyond. Will was blind as he picked up the photos he accidentally knocked off the edge of the table with some of Helen's unstrung beads, blind and strung out there in her place. In his mind, he was accomplice to a ghost-faced killer who could not help herself, no. Cass was helpless, like she had been all her life, the daughter of the woman whose whims landed the whole family in the hands of a man who robbed local banks in the side roads, small American towns. Will was the one who should have known better, who should have done something to prevent the tragedy. He put his hand on Helen's roommate's boyfriend's back when the euphoria was triggered again. His inhibition fucked and discarded. How he had been shy. How reticent he had been all through life. And why. He wanted to make up for being so cold and made no secret of it. It didn't matter to whom he reached out so long as quicksand and quicklime stayed away. The shit that sapped him of feeling and made Helen, the sky blue in her eyes and beads, hate him. The beads that he knocked off with the photos off the edge of the table when he fell to his knees voluntarily and made no secret of his exultation. The fingers of each hand spread and wrists crossed before his face then uncrossed and swept over the sky. Do you want me or not? Her eyes asked. I do, he wished he could tell her. I want you so bad, but this passion is danger. This passion could incite jealousy, violence. Passion, what people give the world for, for they know they'll remember. Passion is memory eternal, and Will got it easily, but he had begun to realize what it cost, or what his life would be like after he had received exactly in return what he gave. Karma was a beautiful bitch. The catharsis had a residue in him now that, when he focused, disturbed him severely. But he was already disturbed, so it only made him more of what he was. And the intensity by which he could leave the walls and people and cigar boxes and books behind was unprecedented in his life and could not be sustained for long, though it would never fade. And he slept well again in the night, hard like a child who ran faster than his legs in the morning after fresh snowfall fallen face first and turned gleefully on his back within his own indentation, made into an angel that has pillaged a crystal field untouched. And each time this intensity returned, his head turned slightly to one side and his eyes rolled and he leaned forward and the icon fell away from his chest and hung down with his hair wherever he may be. No one knew, not even he. And here he focused like a woken vampire on this beautiful boy showing him Brooklyn in black and white dropped like cards on the table. He could see himself advance with this guy. They could be together and they could get together and he could add gay to his list of problems or a list of obstacles overcome and have a three-way with Helen or a four-way with her roommate. He had only to have enough drinks in him. Hell, add Bella to the mix because she was with him always. In her absence and lost time, he was her.